hello guys welcome to git basic operations this session let's focus on what is git and what are the basic otherwise what are the common operations we regularly perform while working with git version controlling system version controlling systems are very important when we guys work on projects because it is not easy to manage our source code otherwise project related files without a tool like version controlling systems version controlling tools help us to manage our source files with effective manner it allows multiple developers to collaborate onto a single project it also helps you guys to secure your source code by giving a restrictive access to the developers these tools manage multiple versions of same file whenever we have any issues with the code it gives ability for us to compare with previous versions and even we can check what files are modified which lines are updated for what it is modified those things using this tool if our releases end up with critical issues we still have options to roll back to previous version with help of these tools git is open source git is distributed git is fast because git is a distributed version controlling system every developer can work locally when developers clone the project the local machine also behaves like a git repository this minimizes lot of interactions with a remote server and it makes all operations very fast git has come up with solutions to the problems we had with previous generation version controlling systems like SVN, CVS, clear case, and so on. Usage of Git has uh, drastically increased in recent past. A lot of new projects they directly set up Git as version controlling systems. Coming to old legacy applications, they are migrating from their existing version controlling systems to Git. Let's quickly get into demo and see what are the basic operations we use in our day-to-day -day development work. For the purpose of this demo, I am creating a repository, Git repository, using Bitbucket. Bitbucket is from Atlassian. This is the company who provides this product as a service. Just we need to create account with them, and we can manage our Git repositories. This is as a service model where Bitbucket, otherwise where Atlassian company, manages our servers. We just need a internet and a browser to use this Git remote repository. Uh, getting started with Bitbucket is very easy. Uh, get to bitbucket.org and just follow these instructions. Get started for free. Provide your email ID and continue the process. Within a few clicks, you should be able to create account with Bitbucket. Once your account is created, you sign into this Bitbucket and start using this Bitbucket. This is my mail ID using which I created Bitbucket account. Let's continue with that. I need to supply my password. Log into Bitbucket. This is your Bitbucket home page from this let's go and create a repository in git context repository represents a project go ahead and create a repository here let's give some meaningful name using which we are going to see demos in this video i am naming this repository as devops demo Access level, I'm making it private. Version control system, I'm choosing Git. Hit this create repository button and create this repository. Bitbucket allows us to manage up to five different users and unlimited public and private repositories. If you guys have a team more than five members, it's required you guys get license from this Bitbucket and use it. Let's create this repository. Typically, every developer works on their projects locally. 
So we also need a Git client on our local machines using which we interact with a remote Git servers. Let's go and install that Git client. Git bash is one of the popular uh, command line tools for Git. Get it from this link. So based on your operating system, click that option. It downloads. You just follow the instructions after double clicking that installer. Let's open the terminal. In my case, I open terminal. In case of other operating systems like uh, Windows, you guys right click. You should see options open git bash here, open git gui here. The very first step I want to do is I want to clone my repository from remote into my local. From Bitbucket, choose HTTPS as a protocol. Copy this command. So paste it. This is the command git clone followed by the git url i mean your remote repository location because this is a private repository it expects password let's type in the password okay we cloned the repository let's cd into our project currently we are in our uh, a local repository Let's quickly see how to add files to a Git repository. Let's create a new file here. Let's insert some dummy data into this. Coming to Git, right? Concepts work a little different. And let's see how things work when it comes to Git. Behind the scenes, Git organizes working area, index or staging area, and the local repository. When you guys update files in local repository, maybe you're adding a file or removing a file, otherwise updating a file. Those changes are initially kept in working area. Now, in our case, I created one file. That's a brand new file that file is kept in working area by default right now our 1.sh is sitting on working area the idea is i want to commit this file to my git repository the process is once you update your files so before committing we have to move them into staging area we use a command git add the file name this command moves 1.sh from working area to staging area. We can explicitly mention the complete file name. We also can use while calls like star or star.sh or many other. So git add supports all those regular expressions. I want to simply go with git add star. In sense, this command picked 1.sh from working area and that file is kept under staging area like this. The next step is commit this file to local repository. When you guys perform commit operation, git picks the files present in only index or staging area. If there are any files still in working area, right? Git commit won't pick those files. For example, let's say we created 2.sh. This is the empty file we created. This file is automatically kept in working area like this. In this case, 1.sh is in index area and 2.sh is still in working area. If we go and perform commit, git picks only 1.sh. I mean, git picks all changes, otherwise all files which are kept in staging area. Git commit won't pick the files which are present in working area. So, if you want to commit any file, you have to stage that first before committing. You guys can use git status to check what is the status of current repository. 
So one dot sh is in index area, otherwise staging area. Two dot sh is still in working area. Let's perform commit. Basically, when we commit, it is mandatory to pass the message. Typically, commit message must reflect what kind of implementations we did. All right. This file is committed to local repository. So please keep that in mind. Everything is still in our local machine. After we committed the file, this file is kept in local repository. The next command we want to use is git push. Git push picks all commits, all new commits in the local repository and pushes those commits to remote machine. Let's do that. In this command, origin represents your remote repository location and mass represents the branch. We'll discuss more about branches in coming videos, but for now, we are pushing all our local changes to a remote server. Origin internally points to a remote location, which is a Bitbucket server, and master represents the branch to which we want to push all our changes. Let's run this command. The commits are successfully pushed to Bitbucket. Let's verify those files in Bitbucket server. Let's click source. It should display the commits we recently did, which contains that 1.sh. You can see that file here. The next command we should talk about is git pull. When do we use git pull basically? When multiple developers working on same project, probably other developers committed changes to this remote repository. Maybe we want those changes part of a local machine. Then we use git pull for that. To simulate this example, let's directly update the file in remote machine itself, remote server itself. Using Bitbucket, we can update the source files directly using this web browser. Let's commit this. I'm going with a default commit message. This new commit we did from remote is not present in the local. Let's see how to pull those latest changes or new changes from remote to local. We are using git pull origin master this command pulls all changes new commits from remote machine under master branch and it also does a merge it merges all changes to our local repository git pull basically does two things it, it does git fetch in sense it gets all new commits from remote to local followed by it performs git merge it automatically merges changes in remote with local repository Let's do that. This time looks like Git did a auto merge using fast forward mechanism. We'll see all those things in later videos. Okay, let's talk a little bit about origin here. What is this origin? What exactly is that? Behind the scenes, as you said early, origin points to a remote location. Let's check those details. Run this command. This gives the information about your origin. Origin is a alias name pointing to your remote server. Instead of giving this big URL every time we push and pull, it's better to give a short name, which is origin. We can think of origin as a short name pointing to your remote server. We can create more remote entries. Let's say I want to push my changes to one of my colleagues. What I can do is get remote and let's say my colleague name is Hari and the URL of my colleague's machine. I don't really have any uh, URL of my colleagues. I'm using same URL like this. Just I want to show you that we can create multiple remote entries there. Let's go and run this git remote iPhone V. You could see four entries with name, origin and Hari. Let's say I want to pull changes from hurry. What I can do is get pull instead of origin, I should put hurry and the branch. This command pulls changes from this URL. 
the next command we should talk about is uh, git fetch git fetch and pull sound similar but they have different functionalities let's get into a demo and see that git fetch gets changes from remote to local without merging with local repository in case of pull gets changes from remote to local plus it also does much but in case of fetch right it won't do much it only gets changes from remote to local let's see that with a demo let's edit this file for this demonstration we added line number four in this case let's commit this we updated a file in the remote those changes are not present in the local let's check that one see we have right now three lines of code in the local and remote has four lines of code let's run this fetch command we got remote changes to local and check this one again see that still we have three lines of code because fetch bought all changes to the local but it didn't merge with your local repository let's say you want to changes from fetch to be merged with your local repository we have to run one more command git merge this command will merge all the changes from remote into local repository let's see the content of this file now can you see that fourth line which is added after running git merge this is how git fetch works